Welcome back, Shalligators. Well, today we've got some big news, two big pieces of news, which is gonna necessitate a whole other video, from the Kardashians, like when do we not? Kanye West, in his new song, Hurricane, seems to admit that he cheated on Kim Kardashian after they had two kids already. Clearly this wasn't much of a deal breaker because she went on to have two more kids. At least they were cute, right? So I asked you guys, because I did a little YouTube short about it, and yes, I'm doing YouTube shorts, TikToks, and reels, basically for like breaking celebrity news. It doesn't necessarily require a whole video, but I still have some shit to talk, so I do little ones, and I'm trying to do completely different content on all three platforms, so it's not just the same thing repurposed. So definitely check me out. I'm Shallon XO on all those platforms, so go ahead and check that out. But I asked you guys, like, as I talked about this, like, what's the topic here? And the big one that came up was like, how to stop dating cheaters. Like, if you find yourself always in this situation where like someone's cheating on you or not respecting you, like, what does that mean? We're also going to talk about like how to recover from the humiliation of being cheated on. Cause there's just, there's so much going on here. And like I said, there's another piece of Kardashian drums that I also covered on shorts and reels and TikTok and whatever, which is... <laughs> Scott Disick sliding into Eunice's, Benjima's DMs and talking shit about their mutual ex, Kourtney Kardashian, who's all loved up with Travis Barker. And the topic there is like, what do we do when our ex starts meddling? When finally we're happy and they're like, mm, I don't think so. Let me go ahead and I'm here to ruin your life. Hello. I came here to cancel you in real life. Just I came here to cancel your happiness. How do we deal with an ex that just keeps popping the fuck up like a virus? We're gonna talk about that in another video. So let's talk Kim and Kanye. Oh, but yes, I am here wearing this hat. I'm in California for a bachelorette party, so I'm gonna take the weekend off, but I wanted to cover this because it's it's so, it's so relatable. Like, <sighs> do you, Kanye is punching out of his pay grade with Kim. I'm sorry, I know some of you guys are like, oh, I love Kanye. Well, I don't, do you wanna have sex with him? Okay, so I respect a lot of people professionally. Danny DeVito, Morgan Freeman. I'm not gonna marry him, I'm not gonna shag him. And if I did, and they had the audacity to cheat on me, on me? Wow. Morgan Freeman would never cheat on me. Well, wait, didn't he like marry his step-granddaughter? I, something weird happened there, so forget about that. But let's talk about this. But before we do, just wanna remind you guys that we have like, I think two spaces left on the trip with me to the Dominican Republic. And what else? What else are I gonna tell? Oh, if you guys need uh, some one-on-one -on -one help from me, feel free to go to my website, shallonlester.com and click submit a question. We have a new feature where you can submit a question, get help in just 24 hours. Because I know sometimes like things can't wait. Or there's a different option to get help within a week. And you can also get an Instagram review. I take a look at your Insta, see if it's sending the right message, maybe little things to change you know if you're getting back out there or just want to present the best version of yourself so check that out shallonlester.com and like i said follow me on tiktok and reels on instagram at shallonxo because i always ask for your topic suggestions it's really fun i just love doing these things so let's read from the gospel aka kanye's new song and yeah do you guys like my douchey hat i'm in california and the bride for this bachelorette she's like wear a flat brim hat so i had to like go get one and i feel like in this blogger hat i feel like michael scott in his jeans yeah, if you know, you know, you know. I'm like, I'm a whole different person. Okay, so these are the lyrics. Here I go acting too rich. Here I go with a new chick. And I know what the truth is. Still playing after two kids. It's a lot to digest when your life always moving. I don't love the the rhyme of moving with truth. Is. It's, it's passable, but I would prefer something different. He goes on. Architectural digest, but I needed home improvement. $60 million home, never went home to it. Genius gone clueless, it's a whole lot to risk. Alcohol anonymous, who's the busiest loser? Now that doesn't rhyme at all. Who's the busiest losiest? Who's the busiest losest? It, he's gonna, this is why. This is why he's not my, this is not my man. So a source told page six, like the song is in a way his testimony of everything he did wrong and taking accountability for their marriage breakdown. I was going to slam this shut, but I'm recording the audio, so I'm not going to slam it shut. Taking accountability. God. I, I would think that taking accountability would maybe be something that happens, I don't know, in private and not something you blast around to humiliate the woman you've already humiliated. You've spent the better part of a decade humiliating with your bizarre antics and your man boobs. Okay, she works out every day. 
be hot. That's, you know what, if you wanna be crazy, be hot. So right away, I've got a real problem with him like airing this dirty laundry. I mean, yeah, I guess like people write songs about their life, but it just seems like if you're truly sad and sorry, like you would protect your wife, the most famous woman in the world. You know, it's not like he's like doodling this on a notebook and the other dudes at like AutoZone saw it and were like, oh, did you cheat on Crystal? No, like everyone clearly is gonna know. And now the reason, I mean, you guys brought up the topic, how to deal with being humiliated when someone cheats on you. Let's talk about that first. I've been cheated on. You've probably been cheated on. And in a way it's like, I almost feel not, certainly not lucky, but at least like when I knew I was getting cheated on or when I found out, like at least I knew because I'm sure I've been cheated on and didn't know. And that is truly the most horrible thing. And I brought this up a million times, but my ex-husband had said, because one time we were just like talking about cheating, not that anyone did, but he's like, and we go back to this. The reason cheating is so painful, he said, is because it means you're making decisions based on a reality that doesn't exist. You feel like a fool because the decisions you've been made are foolish. They're foolish. That you're like giving all this time and concern and empathy to someone who's like, eh, like out doing God knows what with God knows who. So I really think that that does go to the heart of it. And we feel so stupid when we get cheated on. I mean, our, our hearts are broken. We have the reality based or the decisions based on non-reality that's going on. But we also just have this feeling that we were conned, you know? And we have that same feeling. Like these are very, very similar feelings as when you get ghosted. And I was thinking today, as I was like putting on my douchey hat, like being ghosted is like being cheated on when you don't have commitment though. You know what I mean? And I know what you're saying, like, well, you can't get cheated on if you don't have commitment. Honey, the heart is not a court of law, right? This is not a contract. We are emotional, sensitive creatures and we feel what we feel. And this is why it always bugs me when dudes are like, well, I didn't, t I didn't have sex with her. It's like, bro, you were texting her. You were holding hands. There was this emotional thing, like the in out of the penis vagina. Like I could give a shit. Like that's, do you think you get released on a technicality? I can't even, I can't, I can't stand anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I tried with you. I, I did. Even Michael Scott had to take his jeans off to get them dry cleaned or whatever he did. Okay. Anyway, it's autumn and it's bang season. Isn't it funny how autumn is like bang season? One of you guys pointed that out on my Instagram. I was like, you know what? That's so true. Saturdays are for the boys. Autumn's for the bangs. So you feel like when you get ghosted or cheated on, it's like, was I conned? Was I completely misinterpreting this scenario? right? Like, was I just a fool? Were all my decisions foolish? The time and the allowance and the space that I held for this person, was it all just like, they were like laughing at me? And worse, was everyone laughing at me? Because we are social creatures, right? You know, we talk about social inclusion needs. We're tribal creatures. We need to be included in a tribe. And when we feel like that tribe, whether it's the internet, whether it's our family, our friends, whatever, was like maybe laughing at us, that means we actually weren't part of a tribe. So not only have you been cast out of your like dyad tribe, you and your boyfriend or husband because he's cheated on you and you're like, oh, <laughs> this partner that I thought I had, I definitely didn't. Then there's the larger social issue of, I've been cast out of like, like my friends and my family think I'm stupid. I am stupid. I'm clearly unlovable because this person cheated on me, got it. But also I'm an idiot because I was the last one to know. If anyone in your life truly makes you feel like you're an idiot or tells you that, or you assume that that's what they think, they should not be in your life. I'm sorry, they shouldn't be in your life. Fuck blood, fuck friendship, fuck anything. No one should be in our lives who make us feel stupid. Now, I'm not saying you need to have a bunch of yes men in your life who's like, oh, you're fantastic. No, my friends, they drag me to hell <laughs> back when I'm wrong. I mean, they tell me when I'm doing wrong, when I'm not being authentic, when they're worried about me, for sure. But when things go wrong, which we all know, like our friends are like, we hate him. We hate him, right? And you're like, but I love him. I, I hear what you're saying, but what I'm going to do is actually the opposite. Thank you guys, let's see you next brunch, right? I'm gonna do that. When things go south and they hit the fan, you want friends who are like, oh, I love you. I wish you would listen to me, but I'm still gonna be here for you. 
you know? Now, of course, we've all encountered people who abuse that elasticity and they chronically go back to shitty people and they chronically want us to play therapists and they chronically love the attention. But we're going to get into that a little bit later, okay? Because we can't let bitches do this. And we also can't be bitches. We can't be the bitches doing this. But if you're worried about like this one particular person is going to laugh at me, the car of people who judge as we talk about, why is that person in your life? My definition of a friend is a rider, a rider. Like my enemies are their enemies. They're never going to make me feel stupid. They're going to help me learn, but they're not going to like twist the knife. And if they do twist the knife, they are no different than a troll on the internet. And you guys know and have seen how I deal with trolls. I am not very merciful. So ask yourself truly if anyone is laughing at you or if this is just your own sort of projection because you feel stupid and betrayed. You're allowed to feel like that. That is the natural consequence of cheating or getting ghosted for sure. But is it accurate that other people might be saying that? Probably not. And if that is, that is accurate, you need to do some house cleaning. Now, the other part of this is, like you guys suggested, suggested, how to stop dating cheaters. So yeah, there's just one, just one piece. As we know, my bangs are always a true enemy of this channel. But there's, there's shit going on in the Kardashians. And I, I did also a little short on Addison Rae and her new boyfriend who looks like he smells. He looks like, one of you guys said, Willy Wonka's like hideous son. And just, he's so fucking gross. You have women like Addison dating this thing you fish out of a trash can behind a dumpster at 7-Eleven. You have, and maybe he's talented. I really don't care. I don't care because I don't like ugly people. I'm sorry, you're famous. You should be hot. This chick tries so fucking hard to look good. She's like medium to high attractive, but she's not, whatever. You have people like that, Addison, who's so successful. You have Kim, you have Kylie, you have Chloe. And it's like, we think, I talked about this in the, in the short, like we think that if we're famous, like, oh my God, we're going to be able to date Chris Evans and Henry Cavill and we're going to just have like the best love life and all the things that we stress about now will not be a thing anymore. Like we're just, it's all just going to be like wiped away. Will it? Look at who these women choose. Not just choose, keep around. Now Addison... I don't know anything about this dude. He could be lovely. He's Israeli and they're very smart people with enormous penises. So hopefully that's what's going on there. And he's talented or whatever. But the Kardashians, Travis, Tristan, Kanye, I guess they're like leaders in their field, but all three of them are cheaters, chronic cheaters. And all three of those women are not. All three of those women have created something out of nothing, created these empires out of extremely marginal talent. I mean, fuck dude, like that is impressive. And yet they choose these guys who are no better than the guys they would meet if they were working at Walmart. And it just blows our minds. It's like, if you can't find a quality man who appreciates you with all your money and all your beauty and like the private cars and the jets. Then the horrible thought is, well, maybe those things work against us. Maybe all the accolades and all the trophies that we amass as, as the alpha women that we are, are actually just building a fortress around us. Maybe the shine from those metals are blinding men and making them <sighs> recoil away from us. The last three people that I've dated in like the last six months, you know, I got them. All three of them have said to me, all three, I was too happy. The sex was too good. I didn't expect this. I'm afraid of you. I'm intimidated by the intensity of these feelings. I'm intimidated by how successful you are. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? We are taught that if we achieve and we do these things, we get a reward, right? right? Like this is the path, like the, no, you're a good girl, you get A's, you get a job, you make your own money, everyone's gonna love you for this. And it's like, you look at the Kardashians, me, you, I mean, whatever, it does, it's not about a dollar amount, it's just about like 
am I more intimidating than the next girl, right? How does this all relate to cheating, right? Where am I going with this? Part of it is just a rant, just need to get it off my chest, I got it. But part of it is like, we need to observe who we're magnetizing. Powerful women, which we are, we have a tendency to attract beta males in some category. Now, males at large are not divided, or humans, even females, are not alpha or beta. There's a lot of people who are just people, and that's great. Like, you're not an alpha female or a beta female. No. And some are alpha men. Most people are somewhere in between, right? They've got a little alpha, but we can all skew a little beta sometimes. We gotta, like, be cognizant of that. But, like, a beta is a guy who is ruled by his ego in a negative way. An alpha man is ruled by his ego in a positive way. Hey, I know who I am. I know what I'm supposed to do on this earth. I'm supposed to protect others. I'm supposed to be the best me that I can be. I'm supposed to make my woman feel like a fucking queen. Because if I'm a king, then she's got to be a queen, right? They have that ego drive in a healthy way. A beta has it in a negative way. I'm going to tear her down. She, it's the kill the cheerleader syndrome. Do you know what kill the cheerleader is? I actually want to talk to you guys about this idea. Kill the cheerleader is... As the name I give to this syndrome of nerds who grow up and get like hot or they get power or they like suddenly, suddenly chicks start noticing them and not just chicks, the type of chicks they could never get back in high school, the cheerleader. And even though this girl is like genuinely into them, and I know you guys have been down this road, this dude can't not blow it and not just blow it. He has to cut her down. Why? Revenge for middle school. Kill the cheerleader. He could never have her. And now even though he can, he's cutting off his nose to spite his face. He's shooting himself in the foot. There's a lot of folksy metaphors in here. But we see this constantly. I literally just got killed the cheerleader by this dude who is like so fucking inferior. I should. So my idea is I bought the domain name <laughs> and I want to make a website where we like submit these dudes. And Ed Sheeran is kind of the classic example of this and we've done a video because he would just like crush these literal Victoria's Secret models who thought like he's gonna like me because I'm, I mean, I'm out of his league, right? And then he doesn't and you're like, what? And our ego gets so caught up in it. I've done some videos on this. I've done a bunch of videos on it, but I do wanna know your thoughts. Would you guys submit these dudes who are like nagging you, not just not liking you back, but like cutting you down, cutting you down. Again, how does this relate to Kanye and cheating? Well, we've talked before about the dynamic of Kim and Kanye. You know Pygmalion? It's a Greek myth. It's this weird ass dude who wishes for a wife and like, I don't know, the gods are like, okay, carve this statue and we'll make a real. And he, they do. And in the myths, many, 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 many versions of this myth, that statue doesn't have a name. In later versions, like in the 1900s, they gave her name, it's like Galatea or something. But up until then, she had no name. She was simply like Pygmalion's creation. Same with like Frankenstein. You know, we call the monster Frankenstein. It's not. Dr. Frankenstein's monster. The monster himself doesn't have a name. Again, Shellen, where are you going with this? We have always discussed Kim and Kanye in these terms, that she was his muse. She was this Pygmalion creation. She was Dr. Frank and Kanye's monster. She was something he created and he describes her thusly. She describes him that way. He came over and redid my closet. He threw out all her stuff. Like I would have been like livid and heartbroken. And it's also, it's one of those control things that seems cute, but it's not. It's like, I bought your clothes because these are the clothes I want you to wear. And then remember when she was getting ready for the Met Gala that one time, and this was recent, and he's like, I don't feel comfortable you wearing that. And she's like, this is your fucking problem. Sorry you're on this weird ass journey. Like, don't project your bullshit on me. Kim, the Pygmalion statue, the Frankenstein monster, was starting to become self-aware and get her own identity. We see this in her getting her law degree and doing prison reform. She was pulling away from Kanye as merely an extension of him because that is how narcissists make us feel. And that's what they want. You are an extension of me. Everyone in this world is merely a character, major or minor, but still, main, still below me, in my play. Oh, you have your own play going on? <laughs> I don't think so. No, no. It's, it's my play. I am, the world is actually revolving around me. Doesn't that kind of sound like Kanye? And doesn't that kind of sound like the rhetoric and the mentality 
of a cheater. What is cheating if not fucking entitlement and just greed? Just plain ass greed. I've cheated on people in the past. I don't now because I've learned from it. And I grew up and I got fucking real with myself after ruining several relationships. But when I was cheating, yeah, I was greedy. I wanted this stable dude, you know, who loved me at home. And then I wanted to go out and do whatever I wanted. Because people cheat for two reasons. They cheat to feel alive and to explore different sides of their personality. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Kanye cheated on Kim after two kids. After her attention had completely reoriented. reoriented Because actually it was Kim herself who said, in terms of how many children you have, one is one and two is 20. If you, if you have one, it's like, all right, we can handle this. Two, it's like you have a billion children all of a sudden. And you, I mean, really, the dynamics change so much. And that's when a lot of dudes feel very neglected, very abandoned. And for a narcissist like Kanye, and make no mistake, Kim is one as well, but I see so much evolution in her and I see a devolving in Kanye. Part of that is mental illness, but like we've said, it's really hard to tell with Kanye where mental illness begins and personality ends. You know, like he's also just kind of a shitbird. and narcissism is not mental illness. This is important to know. It is a personality disorder. That is not mental illness. That's just, you kind of suck. Borderline personality disorder also personality disorder. You can't medicate it. You can't give someone an empathy pill, a cool pill, a thoughtfulness pill. It doesn't work like that. But anyway, so for a narcissist like Kanye to see this loss of, I guess we could say extensionism with his wife, the muse is waking up and now the muse is not just like, oh my God, dress me. She's like, I got to dress the fucking kids, dude. I don't know. Go make your own toast. Like when that person has a different priority, the narcissist man can get very spiteful. Narcissist female too. This isn't just a man, not a man thing. And they will pull away. They will cheat. They will start little emotional fires to get the attention back. We see this in narcissist parents as well. A narcissist is a fantastic parent when the child is young. Because when the child is young, they're dependent. Like, daddy, I love you. Oh my God, daddy's on that. And then around age four or five, the child naturally starts to pull away. They're making their own friends. They've got the coloring book. Like this is how it's supposed to go. At that stage, a narcissist will be really pissed. Like, oh, you don't want to hang out with me this weekend? That's fine. No, no, no. I'll see you next weekend. And they will do something sort of extreme. They will ice out that child and that will create borderline personality and attachment disorders in that child. So super psyched to see how Kanye's kids turn out. Luckily, they've got a super loving mom and all the aunts and uncles and whatever. But again, this relates to cheating because we have to look at why we're choosing these people. Because there's nothing more frustrating than hearing from other people or thinking in and of yourself like, I don't know, I feel like every guy cheats on me. Do you have a friend like that? And have you heard her say that? And are you like, Hannah, I swear to fucking God. Well, you date rappers, Hannah. Okay. Or you date dudes who are unemployed or you met him at a club and you saw him kiss two other girls. So like ah, you as an outsider can see that the patterns. Can we, as an insider, truly our growth and wisdom is learning to be just like an eyedropper full of neutral, just the slightest pullback. We're like, Oh, this is where therapy comes in super helpful. Therapy takes a smattering of stars, connects the dots, and suddenly you have a constellation. It takes all of these seemingly disparate events in your life and behaviors and outcomes. You're like, I don't get it. And therapist is like, I do, Hannah, I do. This is also what I'm trying to help you to do. And therapy is great, absolutely do therapy, but wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do this for ourselves? Just a little bit, just to try to bridge the gap. When I look back on the times when I've dated, would I've just been on a fuckboy bonanza like one after the other after the other is just a shitty guy. Mm. I'm in it now. I am. I'm in it now. Cause I, yeah. Ooh, it's been a rough summer. It's been a rough six months. Like I met a lot of people that I like and they have all ended like not well, not well. And you know what I almost said? It wasn't my fault. Did I not just sit here? 
here and lecture you guys about self-awareness and, and self-accountability and patterns. And here I'm like, mm, no, I don't know her. I don't know. <laughs> but see, it's hard. It's hard. We don't want to do this. Okay, why? All right, I'm using myself as a case example. Why do I not want to be like, why would I? was I so opposed to being, to saying the opposite? Like, oh, it was 100% my fault. They all ended because it was my fault. Let's just say that. Okay, that makes my skin crawl to say because it's embarrassing, right? You feel like a fool. You feel like hopeless. Well, if I say it's all my fault, then, <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna die alone. You also feel like, well, fuck, I've got a lot of work to do now. This seems frightening. I don't know how to disentangle this rat king ball of misery. I'm just going to fall into whatever the answer is, and I'm never going to be able to swim, way, swim my way out of this horrible emotional bog, right? And then you think like, well, I also can't trust myself. If good things and good people come along and I chronically ruin it, or they always end up cheating on me and I'm telling myself this is my fault. Hmm. That's an extreme thing to tell yourself. It's all my fault, because it isn't. But we, we don't tend to do that. We tend to skew in the other direction. It's not my fault. I don't know. These guys are all just fuck boys. Okay. What if the answer was somewhere in the middle? What if the answer was, I'm not driving people away, but I'm also not picking well. And I think for a lot of us, that's what it is. I don't believe for a second, Kim drove Kanye to cheat. I, I don't, but I don't think she picked well in terms of a partner who has the fortitude and the stamina to be a long-term plugged in faithful kind of dude. I don't think she did that. Why? Because she was thinking from a fear-based place. She was choosing from a fear-based place. When we choose a narcissist, we're not, we're not in a good space. Toxic people hone in on our weaknesses Automatical, automatically. It is, it is, they're like the Terminator scanning us for weakness. They're like, got them. They know exactly how to play us. How, how do they know this? I, dude, I don't know. Well, yeah, you know what? Yes, I do. Actually, I do know how to do this. And I, I do. Should I do an evil week video on how, what should I call it? Like how to manipulate others? I feel like I've done that video a million times. Hmm. Okay. Tell me, tell me your evil week suggestions. Anyway, when we're dating from that weak place, we get the kill the cheerleader dudes, right? Where it's like, I know you're not worthy of me. Like you're not, you're below me, but I, I'm assuming you're gonna worship me because like I'm hotter than you or I'm richer, I'm TikTok famous or whatever. And then you don't. And it's like my ego is even more fucked up. So maybe I shouldn't date people just to use them for pampering. Okay. In Kim's case, she was maybe making a fear-based thing. Her fame had like popped. She had just come out of this terrible marriage to... Chris Humphreys, that was super embarrassing. And she wanted someone to make the decisions because where she was emotionally, I don't think, and I'm stepping in her shoes here and assuming some things, maybe she felt like she couldn't be trusted to make decisions. Look, I've humiliated myself. I'm now divorced twice. I'm like on the worst dress list. I just, I need someone else to come in and take over. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to drive anymore. I don't want to be in charge of this out of control spaceship anymore. Kanye comes in, a narcissist comes in, a controlling person comes in and they're like, great. They see an opening and they grab you by the throat. Now that's an extreme example. Say you date dudes and things start out great and then they end up cheating. Well, of course. Of course. Men are simply trash. They are. They're just simply motherfucking trash, right? And we can't change that. And no matter how clean, we keep our side of the street. We can't change another person's behavior. If that is how they are hardwired and some people, you know, I, I won't say hardwiring because I do believe people, I mean, they have personal control and responsibility. We're hardwired to pee wherever we want. We don't. So he can be hardwired to take his dick out constantly. Maybe he could like just learn, but listen, I'm saying that because I don't want you to plug in and think it's your job to fix him because you can't. So if that's simply how he is, whether it's nature or nurture, who gives a shit? You could, you could be doing everything right. It's not gonna change it, but you can pick better. And you might be saying, I did pick better, I did, and this came out of nowhere. Sometimes that's true, sometimes it is. 
many times it's not. Dudes who cheat, they're not always the criminals they think they are. You know, like I was blindsided by my ex cheating on me. I was blindsided to the degree that he cheated on me, that he went to Africa with another woman. I was blindsided by the extremity. But if I'm being 100 and I wasn't when I found it out, I was playing the victim. I mean, I felt victim. I was, I was the victim, but then you get a little distance and you're like, okay, I don't like feeling this way. So what can I learn from this? And that requires that emotional autopsy and autopsies are disgusting. They're frightening and they're horrifying and they're gross. And people don't want to do them on a dead body and we don't want to do them on a dead relationship, but we do it in order to gain clarity, just like on a body. So it's like, okay, well, what do we learn about how this thing died and what can we take into the next situation to prevent this outcome from happening again? When I did that emotional autopsy, I was like, no, this behavior actually isn't an outlier at all. I have seen shades of this many times, many times in our relationship. And someone said to me, the first fight you have is the last fight you'll have. The thing that you first just are like, that first bad fight, when it's like the honeymoon period cracks and all the other little shit you've like brushed on the rug, all right, fine. But when you finally like snap and get mad, it's because it's a meaningful, it's a meaningful thing. And that first fight, will be the thing that breaks you up. And I have never, ever been wrong about that. Looking back on my relationships, I'm like, that's 100%. It was a shade of that issue. And with this ex who (laughs) went to Africa with someone, yeah, I mean, the very first fight we had was some girl in my DMs chirping me, saying, oh, you think he's your boyfriend? He's my boyfriend. And I I lit her the fuck up. I, I annihilated her as, I mean, I just, I go for the throat. But like, that, was that not the result? It's like this dude was a fuck boy. Why did I do that? My ego was involved. <laughs> no, I'm not going to let you talk about my relationship like that. I'm not going to hear you out woman to woman. She also didn't approach me that way. If she'd been like, hey girl, like I think we need to talk. We might be dating the same guy. I'd be like, okay. You know, she didn't come at me like that. And so I was not going to be the bigger person, not for her, cause she can go fuck herself. But for me, in service of my heart, my time, my relationship, I couldn't dial down the ego and be like, hey, if you really want to have a tom- conversation about this, fine. Don't you speak to me like this, but like, let's, let's throw some light on this. What's actually going on here? No, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do it. I was too immature. I was too hot-headed. And I was too, I, was, I needed to be right. Was I focused on peace or victory? Well, it was victory, you know? I wasn't about to say and admit, I look foolish. I feel foolish. I've been making decisions on realities that don't exist. And because that was my, my path, my course of action, <laughs> I, I couldn't handle the petite humiliation. No, no, no. I'm going to save it up and wait for the grand humiliation. That's what I'm going to do. And boy, oh boy, that's exactly how it turned out. Because I was not strong enough to do an in real time autopsy on what the fuck was going on. I was instead going to project excuses, apologies, explanations, logic that was not there from him. I was getting none of those three things. I was filling in the gaps for a variety of pathetic and desperate reasons. So look, these autopsies are horrific, but once we do them and approach it from the place of I got us here. I got us here. No, I did not put that vag in his hand. <laughs> I didn't do that. I didn't put the condom on his wiener when he's like banging that girl after book club, whatever. As if guys go to book club. But I got us here by X, Y, Z. What is it? Denying a red flag. Picking someone who on some level I knew was not healthy for me because I needed an emotional getaway car. I needed distraction. I needed to feel normal. I needed to feel love. My self-esteem wasn't good. I had nothing else going on in my life. I got us here by not listening to people who really do just have my best interest at heart. Maybe the message doesn't always come out in the most like Oprah way, but my sister loves me. My best friends really do care. And you know what? They weren't wrong about this dude. So I got us here. What is that? Fill in that blank. How did I get us here? 
Because the way you're feeling right now after you get cheated on is, I mean, yeah, you feel like this, <laughs> this is my fault. And I know that I'm asking you to lean into that and feel more like it's your fault. But okay, this is pulling out that psychological splinter. Because right now you're thinking that in with like no forward motion. It's just this endless spiral. I did this because you're applying the worst possible reasons to how you got here. Well, he, we got here, I got us here and he cheated on me because I'm fat. I, I got us here and he cheated on me because, you know, like I'm never gonna look as good as so-and-so or whatever it is. Mm -mm 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 that's not it that's not it but if you get to the actual it of why it's not as bad as you think and it's fixable it's fixable because you're applying every single emotional spook story you can to this scenario and it's not true like i i said you know to myself like he did this because i'm older and this chick he cheated on me with was younger and i'm old and disgusting i'm a disgusting old woman who is approximately five thousand to ten thousand years old and that's why he cheated on me and like that's not true. That's not true. Like the chicken she on was one year younger. So like, that's not true. And even if she was 10, no, but the right answer, I got us here because I was denying red flags because my ego was too involved to like, listen to the warnings from everyone around me. Hmm. Okay. I don't love that. I don't love that, but it's not, it's not the fear based brain of you're old, you're fat, you're ugly. You didn't have cool hair extensions at the time. It, it's something shitty, but it's not this horror story that you've applied to it that is all of your anxieties and self-misery. No, it's something that you can diagnose. And now, okay, maybe you're still in that spiral of, oh, this is all my fault. But now you're in that spiral in service of growth because you've got something to think about. You've got promises to make to yourself. Next time, I'm going to hear people out. I'm going to give myself 48 hours before I react. If some chick says she's been fucking my boyfriend, I'm going to ask around town. <sighs> then we're going to make a decision. Hey, that's progress, man. That could be the difference between jettisoning a shitty guy at the first red flag instead of sticking around for the five. The next thing I want you guys to do is look at if you date a type. Most of us do. And that type might not be like blonde, tall, lacrosse. It could be like, preppy, you know, outgoing. It could be all sorts of things. And I want you to look at that type. And if you don't know, ask your friends, because a lot of times they're going to have like, you know, our friends, they know everything. They really do be like, Hey, if you wrote, if you did like a police sketch of who I date, what would it be like? What, what would he look like? Where would he work? What would, what would he be like in a crowd? How would he treat his parents? Blah, blah, blah. Your, your friends will be able to tell you. And then I want you to look at that police sketch and be like, okay, divorce yourself from all of these like things. He's, he's preppy. He like, you know, he plays the cross. He's Catholic, whatever. And ask yourself, what do these things mean? What is, what is the value of these attributes? I date younger guys, right? This is my thing. I'm <laughs> seeing this dude who's 36 and my friend's like, <laughs> they're like delighted. Um, but I, I had to ask myself, I was like, okay, what do younger guys mean? What is the meaning of this? And approach it get curious not furious do not apply a value judgment to this well you date younger guys you're fucking pathetic and you're a predator no no i date younger guys because they're interesting and they're like exciting and they're youth youthful and they're vibrant vibrant mm, what is that word okay we're, we're onto something i can feel i can feel like my psychological brain sniffing around that vibrant because what do i hate i hate dullness well, what else do i hate i hate boredom why do you hate boredom? Well, you were left alone a lot as a child and you were bored. You were bored as fuck. And when you were bored, you felt really, really trapped. You, you were like clawing at the windows, trying to get out to like the center of life because you felt like everyone else was having a good time and you weren't. Now we're onto something, right? Now we're kind of getting someplace. Now these painful patterns, well, they still might be painful in the past. Hmm. But now we've got, we've connected some of these dots and we're making a constellation. So now I know I need someone vibrant. They don't have to come in a 22 year old's body. Mm -hmm. Although 22 year old's body is pretty hot. They could come in a 36 year old's body. They could come in the form of someone who has some really amazing hobbies. Oh, now we've shifted a little bit. 
We have stopped focusing on this one thing we think we need that we've equated with safety and familiarity, even though safe, it, it's not. Like safe can also be toxic. It's interesting. We don't pull ourselves towards people who truly are the healthiest or who make us happy. We pull ourselves towards people who feel familiar. And so that felt familiar. These fuck boys might feel familiar. Okay. But instead of focusing on this one thing that you need, maybe you could be like, all right, now I acknowledge I need this. And I'm going to try to replicate it in someone who doesn't have this other melange of bullshit along with it. For in Kim's case, I need a guy who work, who worships her. You know, that's her thing. I need someone who worships me. I'm a bit of a narcissist. I need someone who is like, I'm obsessed with you. Okay. Maybe you could find that in like a Silicon Valley millionaire, a Texas cattle baron, someone who has their own thing going on where they don't have this chronic need for attention and fucking and, you know, to be the most bizarre human being on planet earth. They can worship you, but it doesn't come with all of these other side dishes of misery. Hmm. Dating is data. And after every bad outcome, we owe it to ourselves to examine some data. What, what new data points can I log here? Get curious, not furious. What have I learned? We never lose, we win or we learn. So let's learn. And when you, when you decide to learn, and I'm not saying you're gonna sit down and have this like, ah, moment about everyone you've ever dated and you're never gonna date a cheater again, no. Just like an actual scientific discovery, it's slow, man. It's beep, boop, boop. It's tiny, incremental, painstaking, little nudges forward, but they're still forward nudges, right? So after everything, it's like I've gained just a little bit of knowledge about myself. And so now when I date someone and I need them to be vibrant and not boring, I recognize that that isn't an exclusive trait to dudes who are 24 and under. You can be interesting and older. You know how I know that? I am interesting and older. All my friends are interesting and older. You guys are interesting and older. So, okay, we have moved boop, just a little bit forward, but we've still moved forward. So do this exercise, sit with yourself, let the answers bubble up and approach it with neutrality as though it was like your friend's life. Like, hey, whatever you discover, that's great. The fact that you're discovering anything is the progress. The obstacle is the way. I wanna know what you guys have to think about Kim and Kanye. Who do you think he cheated on her with? On her with? I love how he was <laughs> sure to say a new chick. Chick? That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. I'll see you later, shall we? We're gonna be back next time with a video on Courtney and Scott and Eunice and Travis and a whole bunch of bullshit. 